Hold on. There's a few things I'd like to clear up. <sighs> Go on. So, after you left the campsite, we had a longer talk. Hmm. Clearly, we've only scratched the surface of the Temple of Silence question. It doesn't surprise me at all that the one in the Academia is a fake. Do you have any connection with the Temple of Silence? <sighs> I do. I trust you're all aware of the spirit that gives me my power. Hermanubis, the original founder of the Temple of Silence. Due to my unique constitution, I was put through a number of trials in the desert when I was younger. Later, I met the professor, and he brought me to Sumeru City. But my memory of that time is hazy. I can't recall much. It's a good thing that Kave noticed the emblem on the letter. Without that, I don't know if we would have connected the dots and realized there was more to this case than mere extortion. I did not recognize that symbol at all. Whether that's because I've never seen it, or because my memory fails me, it's hard to say. Yeah, you're right. Thank goodness for Kave, and for all Haytham's diligence during his time as acting Grand Sage. But Cyrus must have recognized it right away, right? Otherwise, he wouldn't have had any qualms about you reporting it. Oh, maybe his connection to the Temple of Silence goes even deeper than yours. I suspect so, too. Professor has never once mentioned the Temple of Silence in conversation. And whenever the conversation turns to Hermanubis and the concept of spirit indwelling, he avoids going into any depth. Well, speaking of avoiding things, you do realize, don't you, now that we've caught up with you, you're stuck with us for the rest of the way. <sighs> I am aware. And I have accepted it. Or rather, I don't see how I could manage to ditch you en route. So, I might as well accept that you're coming with me. That's right. Fact is, we're coming with you whether you like it or not. So the best option now is to try to look out for each other. Ha! Fair enough. Then at least let me buy you a drink once we're back in the city. Works for me. All right, off we go. Let's start by seeing what the guards here can tell us. Hello. Mahamatra Sino? I'm looking for someone. So I'd like to confirm any recent foot traffic in and out of Aru Village. Hmm. A man matching that description passed by Aru Village not too long ago. He stopped by to load up on food and water and feed his sumter beast. Then he was on his way. Where was he going? Let me think. He took a seat by the entrance of the village for a while, and had a brief chat with the person who came to deliver the water. He said he was headed... somewhere near an oasis, but he didn't mention which one. Do you have a map? I can mark out the direction he was heading in the best routes to any nearby oases. I have one. Mark away. Great. There you go. <sighs> Thank you so much. You were a great help. You've got a really good memory. Ah, you're quite welcome. Just doing my job. Best of luck. I hope you find him soon.
Hold on. I see some people over there. Do you think it's safe to ask them what they know? Should be. I'll go... No. I'll do it. Huh? Why can't Sino go talk to them? What difference does it make? <sighs> Given my background, appearance, and the way I dress, I might not be the most welcome visitor here. Just in case, it's probably better to let a more neutral party handle things. Ah, hello there. I hope I'm not interrupting. My friend and I are looking for an elderly man who's gone missing around these parts. Any chance I could ask you a couple of questions? Oh, a missing person, huh? Sure, sure, sure. What do you want to know? I'm just wondering if you've seen him. Let me give you the details. So, a silver-haired guy in a long robe, culture type with thoughtful eyes, and he's traveling alone. He'd stand out like a sore thumb around here. Yeah, sounds like the kind of guy we'd remember if we saw him. He's looking behind me. Uh-oh. Uh that guy's looking our way. Your friend over there stands out a lot, too. Hey! Aren't you Sino, the General Mahamatra? Yes, that's me. You don't seem surprised that I recognized you. It wouldn't be the first time. Oh, you're the one looking for the old man who's gone missing, aren't you? I have a bad feeling about this guy. <sighs> Hmm, <laughs> someone's on edge. You don't trust me much, do you? No need to hide it. I understand why you're wary of us. Still, you came to us asking for help. Do you want it or not? I thought you were a group of merchants. Seems I was mistaken. Hmm. <laughs> Your henchmen don't look like much. But something tells me they put up a better fight than most mercenaries. Hey! Hear that, guys? You're my henchman now. Suits me. As long as I get paid for it. Just cut to the chase already. I'm running out of patience. <sighs> all right, all right, all right. Come with me. All of you. Don't you want to find your friend? A silver-haired, long robe culture type with thoughtful eyes? <laughs> Sounds like there's a whole other side to Cyrus I didn't know about. So you know where he is? Just follow me. I'll take you to him. And here. Uh, what? Where are you looking? There's nothing here. Please, step back. Whoa! Something's coming out of the ground! What is this enormous building doing here? And how was it so well hidden? King Deshret's technology? Wait, so... Hold on, who are you guys really? Is this... the Temple of Silence? So you're a member? All? Good questions. There'll be plenty of time to address them later. This is not what Paimon was expecting to find in the desert, especially not hidden right next to an oasis. I'm scared. They must have kidnapped Cyrus. D do you think this is the guy Raka met in the tavern? Hmm. What's wrong? Thinking about your professor? I just hope for your sake you haven't done anything you might regret. Well, me too. 
Hope I haven't done anything to incur your wrath. You can wait here for now. I'll inform our leader that you've arrived at the Temple of Silence. Sit tight until he comes to greet you. Uh, so he's just gonna leave us here unattended? Hmm. Maybe we're not being kidnapped after all. They can't have been at the Oasis by chance. They were waiting for us. Whoever the leader is here, they were obviously counting on us showing up. <sighs> So this is the Temple of Silence. After leaving the rainforest, they hid themselves here? Hey, look! That guy's coming back! Don't worry. Someone will come and call for you soon. What's your name? <laughs> Sorry, guess I was so delighted to see you, I forgot to introduce myself. My name is Sethos. I'll be here if you need me, but I'm not planning on answering all of your questions. Other than that, you can occupy yourselves however you see fit. So we're free to explore by ourselves? Yep. I mean, I'm not worried about you running off. Cyrus is here. And unless I've misunderstood, you're all quite anxious to see him again. <sighs> He's right. Well, if we've got some time... We might as well take a look around. I never imagined that the true Temple of Silence would be hidden somewhere like this. We've passed through these parts before, but never noticed anything. That's King Deshret's technology for you, I guess. It borders on the miraculous. Amazing to think that it's been preserved intact all this time. We should be wary of our hosts. Still, at this point, we can be confident that the Professor is safe and sound. So that's something. Hey, Sethos! Have you got some time to chat? Sure. Although, I'm assuming by chat, you mean you have questions for me? <laughs> I don't blame you. Anyone else would. Not often. The Temple of Silence is a place of quiet and solitude. We don't get too many visitors. Nope. Not once. Really? I have no need to go there. Not when the taverns are full of the Urakas of this world. Besides... We're well aware of what goes on at that place. Spies? <laughs> it's not as clandestine as that. The city gates are wide open. Anyone's free to walk in. You can find out all you need to know just by walking around town and hearing the word on the street. Yes, that was me. Although, tricked is a stretch. He was asking everyone in the tavern about ways to make some easy money. He insisted that nothing was off the table, even if it broke the law. So, I told him that Cyrus had embezzled a large sum of Mora from the desert. So you framed Cyrus for a crime that he did not commit? No, no, no. That's not entirely true. Let me jog your memory. The letter just said that he had uncovered Cyrus's secret. 
It didn't say what secret that was. Of course, Raka was a great accomplice, really. Very cooperative with a little bit of wine in him. Did exactly what he was told. And not much of an original thinker, though. It doesn't surprise me that he struggles academically. Why did Cyrus leave for the desert as soon as he received the letter? You'll have to ask him that one yourself. Certain things I can't answer for him. I'm neither judging nor defending him. All you need to know is that he recognized our emblem. And it was his own choice to take the bait. <laughs> what kind of question is that? He's the General Mahamatra. Everyone in Sumeru knows who he is. Right, but back at the Oasis, you can't have known who he was for sure, or you wouldn't have asked him. So, what we're really asking is, have you never seen him in person before? I've lived in the desert my whole life. Guess you could say, I've never had the pleasure. Ugh, why does Paimon feel like this guy's not being straight with us? Come on, we've only just met. If I give you all the answers up front, you'll have nothing left to look forward to. Mm-hmm. Ah, here he is. Grandfather, the person you wish to see is here. Well done, Sethos. Greetings, one and all. I am Ba Moon, the current leader of the Temple of Silence. I know why you are here, and I thank you for your patience. Bring him out. Professor! Cyrus, are you okay? Watch what you're doing! Oh, my apologies. We have no intention of causing you distress. But you must understand, Cyrus is of great importance to us. We had to find a way to bring him back to us. Cyrus owes me his life. And to the Temple of Silence, he owes a debt of gratitude. I let him go a long time ago, but now... The time has come to demand payment. <sighs> I wanted to end my feud with this old bag of bones before you caught up with me. But you got here so quickly. Just leave, Sino. This is a matter between us two old men. You're all too young to get involved. So that's why you didn't want to report the letter. You'd made up your mind to come here from the beginning. You only left in such a hurry to try and throw us off your trail. Some things in life catch up with you, no matter what you do. You shouldn't have come. That alone brought the others. Sino didn't make us do anything. We came here for the same reason he did. To rescue you. We'd appreciate you telling us the truth. Otherwise, it seems a little unfair on everyone who had to stay behind. My secrets are secret for good reason. Bringing them to light can... Only lead to misfortune. You're afraid, aren't you? You can't bring yourself to speak of your past deeds to the students you nurtured as if they were your own children. You recognized our emblem because for many years you lived among us. Indeed, you all but became one of us. You knew as soon as you saw the letter that we, not Uraka, were the ones speaking to you. It threatened you only because you know what you did. Your own guilt convicted you. For you, Cyrus, are a traitor. You once shared your learning with us, and joined us in our mission to revive the might of Hermanubis, to bring new hope, new opportunity. But then you betrayed us. 
You bargained for your independence with your past contributions. And then you left, taking with you Hermanubis's might and the wielder of his power. We both know what I said to you that day. That as the leader, I grant you permission to leave. But that one day, the sands of time will catch up with you. And when that day comes, you must pay the price you owe. <laughs> you really know how to hold a grudge. Hermanubis's might? And the wielder of his power? Does he mean you? <sighs> Professor. Anything to say? Ramon is right. I came here once before. They rescued me from the brink of death once. Many years ago in the desert. When he learned that I was a scholar, he invited me to come here and revive the might of Hermanubis together. Uh, it was a great, daring plan, and one shrouded in secrecy. The Temple of Silence had been bereft of Hermanubis for too long. The strength of its faith and its warriors were waning. The moon proposed that we implant bar fragments, shards of Herbanubis, into the bodies of suitable vessels. If the experiment was successful, the spirit of Herbanubis would then dwell within the vessel. Uh, many believers volunteered themselves for the experiment. But we soon discovered that the bodies of grown adults could not withstand Hermanubis' power. In the end, Bamoon offered his own adoptive grandson. One other child was identified as a suitable vessel, and his parents agreed to release him into our custody in exchange for a small fortune. These two children were our only hope for hosting Hermanubis' power. For many years, the Temple of Silence had been in possession of two Ba fragments from Hermanubis. As remnants of his raw power, they were exceedingly rare treasures. The test subjects were sent into a room that had been prepared for the ceremony, and instructed to approach the Ba fragments, whose power had been amplified. If, after some time, this power did not repel them, this would mean that they were suitable vessels. The original plan was for a three-stage experiment. Resonance, implantation, and recovery and observation. The resonance stage went quite smoothly for both candidates. As the second stage began, I realized a decision had to be made. Should we implant the fragments one at a time? This would allow us to monitor the results after the first round and adjust our plan accordingly. Or, alternatively, we could implant each fragment in a different vessel at the same time, and compare their effects. But as I was deliberating, both bar fragments suddenly became active. They glowed with a light we had never seen before. I knew that if they were not implanted right away, they would disintegrate and be gone from the world for good. Our two vessels had both displayed great promise by successfully resonating with the fragments. Under the circumstances, the thought of implanting both fragments into the same vessel seemed out of the question. To preserve our faith and our power, we implanted each of them with a single fragment. Ultimately, I ended the experiment and left, taking one of the children with me. In recognition of your past contributions, I chose not to send someone to hunt down and kill you both. Your lives were spared, but I have paid a great price for your betrayal ever since. I have always wanted to see you, Sino. Losing you and your Ba fragment dealt us a devastating blow. We've been in decline ever since you left. I see. So that's how I gained my power. Look, in essence I borrowed your Ba fragment for a decade or so. Now you are seeking justice. If you want to take my life, then so be it. I'm an old man now, anyway. 
But you cannot lift a finger against Sino. He is the General Mahamatra. Your actions would be seen as a declaration of war against the Academia. I'm sure you don't remember anymore, dear Sino, but you've met us all before. You were so young then, when we all gathered around and celebrated the revival of our Lord. You and he, Sethos, you were our final hope. <sighs> You'd like me to return my power? As a follower of Hermanubis, I have allowed this power to remain in the rainforest for far too long. Now, it is time to reclaim it. That power is not yours to reclaim. Sino was chosen by the gods. You cannot take what they have bestowed. You are wrong. Sino was chosen, but he was not the only one. My child, Sethos, has the same gift as he. So those are your terms for freeing the Professor? Despise me all you want. My sins are my own. The Temple of Silence is an innocent party. It is because of my foolishness all those years ago that the Temple's glory has waned. And now I must take responsibility for the decision I made back then. So what you're saying is, the power of one Ba fragment is not enough? You're asking me to return the one in my possession, so it can be implanted in him instead? Divine power causes great suffering to those who wield it. How do you know that Sethos would be able to withstand it? He is no longer a small child. But regardless, this burden is ours to bear, and your objections mean little given that you turned your back on us long ago. <sighs> Both my heart and mind are telling me that what you are proposing is a terrible idea. However... Don't listen to him, Sino. That power is no more yours to give than it is his to take. You have to understand. I know. But if this is a question of your freedom versus a fragment of power, then... There is nothing to debate. Sorry to interrupt, but in my view, there are a number of contentions here that still need addressing. Say that Sino refuses to return his power, and you also refuse to release Cyrus. Then, we are at an impasse. I find it hard to believe that you went to all this effort without planning for that possibility. You're trying to gauge where we stand while keeping your remaining cards close to your chest. Well, my stance is, put the rest of your cards on the table. Then, we can have a discussion. Wait. Those ears. So... We have a descendant of the Valuka Shuna in our midst. Splendid! <laughs> Fate smiles upon us after all. Everything we have longed for, Hermanubis will provide. Perhaps this very day, we... <coughs> <coughs> Why is he coughing so much? He looks like he's in really bad shape. A moon, you take our leader back to his room. <coughs> Sethos, <coughs> you must grandfather. I know what you wish to say. Leave this in my hands. I don't like to drag out conversations, so I'll just cut to the chase. Had Cyrus not stopped the experiment all those years ago, the plan would most likely have been a success. The wisdom of Hermanubis would have been ours. Still, it's no use talking about what ifs. We cannot change the past. I'm not like my grandfather. The Temple of Silence has a grand legacy and a sacred duty to fulfill. So it's somewhat inevitable for the leader to have an inflated sense of self, but I see things a little differently. I don't believe the temple has the same stature that it once did. Time has worn away at its prestige and changed things almost beyond recognition. So I'm not going to force your hand. You're all free to leave, except for Cyrus. 
My grandfather gave him his chance once. And now I'm giving the rest of you yours. <laughs> you have courage and wise judgment, kid. Reminds me a lot of Bamoon in his younger years. I just... Oh, I truly wish that the temple would take an objective look at the academia of today. You've been to the city yourself. I'm sure you've seen that much has changed for the better, and things will only continue to improve. Why not consider cooperating with the academia once more? If you hadn't betrayed my grandfather, I might well be open to persuasion. But it's a bit too late for that now, Cyrus. Hmm. Tainari made a good point earlier. He said there has to be more to your plan than this, and I agree. All you and Ba Moon are after is the Ba Fragment. The Professor will accept whatever fate you deem fit for him out of a sense of guilt. I am the one who has a choice to make. And that's how it was always going to be. Ultimately, you want to trade the Ba Fragment for the Professor, correct? I'm glad to see you're giving it some serious consideration. I won't forsake my Professor. Nor do I intend to run from a problem that I must face sooner or later. <sighs> Give me one night to make my decision. That works. Then I'll be waiting to hear your verdict, Sino. Oh, my grandfather still has a fair few things he wants to say to Cyrus, so... I'll be escorting him back now. Are you sure about negotiating with him? I need to think this through. Everyone, let's meet again later tonight. Until then, take some time for yourself. All right. Well, don't put too much pressure on yourself, Sino. If you need any help working things out, just come and find us. taken some time to reflect on this. If I had to guess, Professor Cyrus came to the desert knowing that he would almost certainly never return. He's a stubborn man who tends to double down when he feels strongly about something. We won't get anywhere trying to convince him to escape. I agree. My master Nephis says the same thing. Once Cyrus makes up his mind about something, he won't listen to reason. Mm-hmm. So that's one thing. A few other things come to mind, too. You've heard all you need to hear about the Temple of Silence. So on that, I don't have anything to add. My own memories of this place are hazy, though. Probably something to do with the overpowering presence of the Ba Fragments. Hmm. That might explain why I suffered from constant headaches and fevers as a child. I do remember having some fleeting moments of profound emotion when vague images would appear in my mind. But I don't recall much, only bits and pieces. I was still young then, and all I could understand was that there was a strong will inside my mind. <sighs> Thinking back on it now, I suppose it was Hermanubis's way of trying to encourage me, even if we couldn't communicate. The power that came to inhabit my spirit was probably one of the cornerstones of their whole faith. So if the will and might of Hermanubis is a real and tangible thing, and they are its rightful worshippers, then... You're not gonna give in to their demands, are you? Surely there has to be another way! No. I have no intention of returning it. I need this power to protect Sumeru. But the temple has the right to make the final decision over its fate, since it belongs to one of the seven pillars of King Deshret. So I will challenge them head on, and win the right to wield this power for myself. Fair and square. Hmm. This reminds me of something Alhatha mentioned to me just before we left. 
He said that the Temple of Silence was originally founded by the ruling elite of the day. Traditionally, such organizations are bound by a strict and ancient code of nobility. Kaveh has made similar observations about the desert tribes from his work trips there. He says many of them have their own internal rules. They talk about the importance of never dishonoring their tribal bonds, or the rules laid down by their ancestors. I think we could turn that to our advantage. Go back to them with a proposal of our own. Wow, and just like that, we've turned the tables on them. Looks like we have the same idea. Turn it back on them now while we still can. In terms that they cannot refuse. That's how we win this. Great. And I know just how to start the conversation. Let's go find Sethos. We'll tell him that I know a thing or two about medicine and would like to take a look at his grandfather's condition. <laughs>